Faraday Effect Part 2. I've got the same setup I had before, except I replaced our screen that we were looking at the spot with, with our electronic detector, actually a different electronic detector, and hooked that, the output of that detector into an oscilloscope. I've also, instead of driving the, the solenoid with a DC field, I'm now driving it with an alternating uh, magnetic field. That's the upper trace on the screen. We can see I'm driving it at about 90 hertz, and uh, the, right now the amplitude is set to zero. The ammeter up above here shows the amplitude of the current, so I can vary that. And you see when I turn up the uh, magnetic field, our, uh, our detector detects something. Right now, the, uh, the polarizers should be 100% uh, cross, so our, our, our channel 2, our signal, should be at 0 volts. Let me uh, adjust the, the, uh, the second polarizer to get them 100% crossed. And you see, I'm, I'm not quite at full extinction. There's definitely a minimum right there, so now I can get them right there. So now they're completely crossed. And our channel 2 signal has a little bit of noise in it. There's lots of, uh, well, basically, we, our detector is, is sitting out in room light. So there might be a little bit of, of signal coming in from the room lights. Uh, I can close the door and see if that goes away. And that helps a little bit. But now I can't see any of the crawls. So I'm going to leave, actually leave a little bit of room light in there. And there's still a lot of uh, this high frequency garbage in there. Which, uh, here's, a, here's a stupid oscilloscope trick for you. You can actually average a lot of that stuff out. If you go to the uh, Acquire button up here, uh, this menu hops, pops up. Uh, you usually use, use the oscilloscope in, in sample mode, but you can just as easily set it to average some number of traces. And when I do that, you see most of the noise disappears. Currently, it's averaging 16 scans, 16 traces across the screen right there. And most of that high-frequency garbage has now disappeared. All right, so now when I turn up the, uh, the magnetic field, we can see some signal appearing here. All right. And it looks, it's not quite symmetric. Let me, uh, again, go back and readjust the polarizer a little bit. I'm just going to untwist the second polarizer a little bit. You can see as I do that, right, I get this signal. Now I'm letting a little more light in, but the signal gets, gets, gets much bigger because I'm letting more light in as I uncross the polarizer. And then when I get them completely crossed, I'm here, and then if I go the other way, again, I'm letting more light in, and this, but the signal frequency changes. So we want to be right where the polarizers are, as crossed as we can get them. Note the frequency is twice the frequency of, our, of the output, is twice the frequency of our changing magnetic field. Think about why that might be. What's, what's going on there? What is, what is going on with the, the shape of this waveform? Now we're ready to actually take some data. I'm going to put a measurement on the screen here. We can measure the amplitude of the output, channel 2, the peak. And this notice this is, this is uh, marking, measuring the peak-to-peak the -peak amplitude. You can convert that to amplitude or RMS or whatever you want, but this is peak-to-peak -peak that the scope is displaying right now. And uh, as I go back down to zero, current, it sure enough drops to pretty close to zero. All right, so now we can take some data. I can set this, increase this up to, to some current. There's half an amp here, and you can read an amplitude. Three quarters of an ampere. All right. I'm going to go to a slightly less sensitive scale to go up to higher currents. All right, the distortion you're seeing right now is because our amplifier is starting to give out on us at high currents. 
So if the output doesn't look like a sine wave anymore, it's because the amplifier circuitry is heating up and distorting the signal right there. You see, I didn't change anything, but the amplifier is not happy driving that large current. So as long as you, the signal looks sinusoidal, you can actually record the data. When it's not sinusoidal looking like that, you don't want to record that. All right, so we seem to be limited to about an amp and a half before the amplifier gives out on us. So I'll take some more data uh, with decreasing amplitudes now. Changing scales again. All right, and that should be everything you need for the Faraday effect.